Hi guys, today I'm talking about my Seiko Yachtsman, affectionately known as the uh, Seiko UFO. Uh, I've had this watch a little time now and uh, these first photos are how I received it when I bought it on an auction. came on a rubber strap that wasn't uh, very comfortable, it was a bit tacky to be honest. You can see the tachymeter is way out of line on the uh, watch when I first got it. You'll see if you look closely on the video, a lot of debris around the uh, tachymeter in the uh, crystal. Uh, later on I took the crystal off and uh, realigned the tachymeter but uh, first job was to get the uh, movement uh, somewhere near a regulated movement. It was losing about two seconds a day when I first got it and with careful adjustments on the lever in the back bit by bit I've got it down to uh, 10 seconds a day positive. Uh, the amplitude really good at 282 at the moment so I'm going to have another go at it so I can get it down a little bit more anyway. Let's open the case and have a look at the watch as it is now, after I've uh, tweaked and uh, messed around with it. Obviously had the bezel off, cleaned behind there, got the bezel back on, cleaned the case, cleaned inside the back, and uh, it's wearing a le leather strap at the moment. The leather strap won't be the uh, strap it's going to stay on, it's just a temporary strap that is a bit more comfortable to wear than the, uh, the rubber band it came on. So you can see it's in quite nice condition, the... Uh, crystal on the front has only got a few minor scratches in you can only see when you're really close up the case is showing a few signs of its age 46 years it's got a few minor dings in but nothing major uh, the back is not the more decorated back that you see on some models but it's just the basic uh, Seiko back the serial number puts it at uh, February uh, 74 the movement inside uh, is very very clean there was a bit of mess and dirt around the uh, case back when I got into it uh, that I cleaned off and you can see the loom on the uh, hands is more or less all all but gone the same on the uh, indices it's pretty much gone but I intend to keep it that way I'm not going to reloom it uh, it's automatic uh, quick at date and day adjust one way you adjust the date the other the day uh, it's also winding as, as well as self winding which uh, some of the models don't have some are just uh, self winding uh, the uh, chronograph works really really well sets back to zero really really well what you find on a lot of these uh, early Seikos that uh, are based on a column wheel chronograph is that the uh, chronograph pushes do take a little bit of pushing there's a little when you press them you can actually feel them click in and you can feel a reset click as well but that's also a case on uh, my new uh, Strayer uh, pole job watch which is uh, new old stock movements which is the 3133 you can see the uh, chronograph uh, ticks quite well keeps uh, really good time and uh, to reset it use the bottom uh, reset button it's got a 30 minute uh, timekeeper on the bottom that doubles up to a 60 minute the top dial is a 12 hour uh, keep timekeeper so it's got increments of half hours right up to 12 when you're resetting the chronograph whichever side it's nearest to the 12 or the uh, I should say before the 6 and after the 6 it'll revert to that side so it'll spring anti-clockwise or cl clockwise that was a good uh, thing to do with these chronographs is to wait till it's near enough at the 12 either side either 5 past or 5 to before you reset them save uh, damage in the return spring uh, the strap you can see is 22 mil but that's been tweaked to go on the watch it's actually a 19 mil uh, watch strap uh, lug size the polishing on the watch when I first got it was really highly polished. I mean, a lot of them seem to be like this when you see them in auctions, but I wasn't a great fan. So, as you've probably just read, I, I basically got a, a kitchen pan scrubber, which is a, a light plastic one. And once the bezel was off, I gave it a few rotations uh, just around the front, and it just took the gloss off it. You can see side by side, it's... Uh, it's not a massive watch, but it certainly was big for its time in the 70s. That's a 40 mm uh, Pagani design on the left. So you can see the lug-to-lug -lug is slightly smaller. It's slightly wider in width, but lug-to-lug -lug it's definitely smaller. Uh, it does sit fairly high on the wrist. Obviously, this was designed for yachtsmen and people who were going out on boats. The s both sides are slightly beveled so that when you're handling uh, ropes and uh, stuff on a boat, when you turn your wrist back and forwards, it doesn't dig in on the side plane into your wrist. You can see the uh, side bevel there. All in all, there's not a great deal of difference between a modern watch, certainly a 40, 42 mil. They're, they're pretty much comparable. Uh, like I say, it's, uh, it's a nice watch to wear. It's very unusual to look at. 
Uh, I'll show you a wrist shot. Uh, we'll get it on the wrist there so you can see. Just sit quietly high, but with them uh, tapered sides on the side, if you were to move your wrist back and forwards, it doesn't interfere at all. Uh, the strap at the moment is more comfortable than the uh, rubber latex or silicon strap that was on it. So, uh, all in all, a very nice watch. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, guys. And uh, if you did, give me a like, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, please ask. And uh, look out for more videos. Thanks for watching.